arise and let every enemy be scattered. Every enemy be scattered. We went to a prayer breakfast. Do you know what it cost an individual? $600. And then they took up an offering. I couldn't believe it. You want an offering and I'm paying you $600 for this prayer breakfast. But I gave it. But guess what happened? You Three churches, while we're waiting for the meals, we had meals, you had to wait. I don't know how they found me. They found out I was connected to Ruth Heflin. And I saw them coming down the aisle, and I thought, I wonder who these people are. And they said, we're looking for you. I said, you're looking for me? Yeah, we want a word from the Lord. I want to tell you that I had eagle eyes all of a sudden. It just happened. I could not believe it. It just flowed out. And they went, there was a seat there, and they put him in a seat, and suddenly I had a lawyer sitting beside me. God utilized that time for three hours, I prophesied over people. Inches flowed, businessmen, people in great places from Israel, seated themselves to hear from God. Hallelujah! Favor came. Glory to God. So I go in there and I said, Lord, the music's kind of dull in this place. Come on, tell it like it is. These are professional people. They've been paid to play. Can you do something about the music? We need, we need a little theory. All of a sudden, they begin to play in the minors. They begin to play these wonderful Hebrew Israeli songs. And people jumped up and formed a line and danced all over that dining room. Come on. Something they don't normally do. Come on. God wants you to do what you don't normally do. Hallelujah. He's looking for a people that will do exploits in him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can the church say amen? Amen, amen, amen to the Spirit of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen to His Word. Amen, amen, amen to the Spirit of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen to His Word. So I'm reading this, Jonathan Khan just wrote that. He wrote about the Spirit feel like. means you're appointed to do something for God. That's why he brought his spirit. Because it's not by might nor power, but it's by his spirit. Can we imagine, Laura, when, when we were praying for Judy Anderson, and you said, I'm an, I'm an Anderson too, right? She said, so I'm going to pray. I mean, we didn't plan that day. God is not looking for a piece of paper that tells you how to do it. Yeah. It is written. Hallelujah. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. There's an anointing of the spirit that gives you power to deal with strangers. There's an anointing of the Spirit to enable us to do our job every day. There's an anointing of the Spirit that our life is to be holy, sacred, and anointed. Seek with the Spirit to do the same thing. It's even as you wash the dishes, make the beds, fold the clothes. It's just not balled up in a ball and thrown in the closet. It's done with order. This is what God is looking for. He can trust us with power to use what he's given us. I'm in the doctor's office, listen to this, before I got to the, I didn't used to mind going to the dentist, I don't know, I've gotten older and I've had a few bad experiences, but it, that's just life. And I've had them to take a, 
a whole partial out of my mouth. Ugh. It was cemented in there. Five teeth. I dreaded it. Well, they only had to take one cap off. I had a cavity under a cap. I thought, Lord, help me get through this. I thought, I'm going to get ready on the way. And I opened up the siren. You know the siren that's inside of you where the fire is? Yeah. Woo! I opened it up as I'm driving. <laughs> and it came out of me. I mean, it came out of me. And so when I got there, listen, listen to me. You can make everything of the Spirit. You think, it's another one of your stories. That's what the book of Acts is about. It's a testimony of the Acts of the Apostles. How you're to operate. So when I got there, there was a young lady I would seen before. I said, I don't know you. Who are you? And she said, well, I'm a late bloomer. I said, how long have you been in, been in dentistry? She said, I didn't start till after I raised my children. I said, you are a wise mother. Your children yeah. was your field first. Yeah. Listen to this. I said, well, I prepared myself before I got here today. <laughs> she said, you did? What did you do? I said, when I was coming up the street, I opened up that well that's inside of me and I let it come forth that everything is going to be all right when you work in my mouth today. <laughs> well, I had a fever blister on my mouth. I'm not going into details, but here's what happened. She sang through the whole time that the doctor worked on my mouth. I thought I'd never had this happen. It didn't seem to bother him. She just kept humming and singing, singing and humming. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done glorious things. His right hand and his holy arm has gotten. Come on, sister, clap your hands a little bit more. Open them up and clap them. Come on, open them up and clap. some music before I preach. She didn't know there were three mice in the organ. <laughs> and the mice got on her feet while she's trying to push the pedals. And nobody could see it. And her feet are tapping all over those pedals, trying to remove the mice. And the people thought she was playing some new music and they're dancing all over the place. They had danced in a long time. Come on, God knows how to get people. He knows how to pump the organ. But he doesn't want to have to do that. And I'm telling you, God is going to visit the church with some lovely angels. Yeah. 
He's going to bring some angels into the church to stare at the church. Like the man, you know, he kept trying to get in the water, and every time he tried to get in, everybody else got in. And he was complaining until Jesus comes along. Jesus has got to come along to the church. And he's going to say, take up your bed and start walking. Hallelujah. Come on, that thing, it's held us back. It's kept us from demonstrating the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Spirit, and what God can do. It's going to make you strong. Don't, listen, don't look around and be concerned about what people are going to think. They're only thinking. Do something. Three times I went into our church and I said, Lord, do something this morning. I'll never forget it. And I went in that morning. Pastors coming up the aisle. I was finally to church on time for a change. I went in. He's coming up the aisle. I did a complete flip in the air and landed on my face over on some seats. And he come running across the aisle. Are you okay, Sister Cornell? I said, I'm fine. He said, it's the glory. I said, no, you've been praying all morning. And I asked God to do something differently. And the two of us met together in the aisle. I flipped in the air and fell over on my face across the this is before church started. Come on. Don't ask what God is doing. Just start praising him. When you feel the music hit a certain beat, when you just feel that lift in the spirit, lift your voice, lift your hands, lift something. Hallelujah. Let the Lord do something and see what the Lord will do. Are you listening to me? See what the Lord will do. See what the Lord will do. Hallelujah. You're going to be seeing, come and see a man that told me everything that I've ever done. I don't hear that testimony in a church anywhere where anybody's prophesying people's lives. Come on, God's going to bring the prophet back into the church. I'm warning you ahead of time. He's going to bring the prophet back into the church. Listen to me. We don't like to mention these things. He's going to expose things. He's doing it. If we don't repent, if we don't confess, all you got to do is tell the Lord, I've been lazy. I've been late. I haven't been doing my homework. I haven't been praying like I should. I haven't been fasting like I should. I haven't been giving like I should. I haven't been waiting on you like I should. I haven't been visiting my neighbors like I should. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? That'll keep you so busy that you won't, you'll wonder if you'll have time to even eat your meal that you prepared. Because the Lord has a lot that he wants to reveal to you and me. Amen? Amen. We see it all the time. But we got to take hold of those opportunities that the Lord presents. When we're a sacrifice, he's got an altar. He said, present yourself as a living sacrifice unto me, holy and acceptable. Start a prayer line in Walmarts, in Fry's, in Safeway. Hallelujah. And see what the Lord will do. On the way here, uh, the Lord told me to read something for everyone. Uh, so I'm going to read Luke 4. 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovery sight to the blind, to set liberty of those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Thus says the Lord. Amen. And the Lord also told me. There's a word for several people of healing and deliverance. There's someone, there's three or four women with the spirit of scoliosis on your back. Receiving this miracle and deliverance, says the Lord. There's also someone with, uh, before Sister spoke about teeth, 
someone with teeth problem and a pulmonary issue. And the doctor said you also have to have a several organs, brand new organs. Well, the doctor, a great physician, has stepped in, says the Lord. Receive new organs, receive the healing and cure that you need in the name of Jesus Christ. And the deliverance has come, says the Lord. Also, there's a, there's a cutter watching, a cutter. The Lord says, your heart has been broken, and I've hurt you. Be healed and delivered, says the Lord. It's a generational curse, a suicide on your family. And it's broken in the name of Jesus Christ. By the written of the anointing. There's also someone with a, a liver problem. A liver problem, but and cancer has reached from your colon all the way to your liver. The, it's a generational curse of witchcraft and it's broken in Jesus name and it goes Amen. goes 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 Amen. and it goes in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. and be healed and cured in the name of Jesus Christ says the Lord Amen. there's someone else oh. in the liver and in the organs that has reached your colon it is broken in the name of Jesus Christ be set free and healed and delivered in Jesus name and there's also a gentleman that has depression and you have gone through trauma in your past and the doctors say you have serious mental illness be healed and delivered, says the Lord. Amen. Today is your day of deliverance Amen. and healing, says the mighty God of Jehovah. The God who heals you Amen. has come to Amen. heal you and deliver you and set you free, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Who is that? Did you have problems with your liver? Anybody in here? He said it was a man that had problems with their liver. Is your liver on your right or left side? I don't know. Right. Right side. Or right, who is it? Somebody you might not know what your problem is. You're having some sufferings. He does he didn't give the word to somebody outside this room now. It could, it could be a relative, somebody that you know. But he wants us to be free today. How many have sickness in your body? Nobody? Stand up if it's you. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God right now for total victory. Give me some total victory music, Richard. Total deliverance, total victory. Hallelujah. Lord, we speak. Put your hand on your body where you're suffering right now. Lord, I thank you for those that have come. For those that believe, they shall receive. You will just lay your hands on in Jesus' name. Chris, you, brother, also, anybody got their hands up? They're standing, laid your hands on them. All these that are standing, a brother in the purple shirt, he's got something in his left side, right here on the back row. Stephen, lay hands on him. Right there. No, right, the brother right here. 
I did right. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Martha, lay your hands as Lady in white, Lady in red. We're a body ministry. We lay hands on one another. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle. I thank you, Lord, for healing every pain, every trauma, every problem. Sort of stiffness in the joints. Problems in the neck. Anybody having problems in the neck? Oh, the brother back there in red? Amen. Brother, do you have problems in your neck right now? In Jesus' name, the name above every name, we take authority over every crippling problem. Our sister's holding her head and her eye. I thank you, Lord. There's no distance in your power, in your word this morning. Sister, do you need healing in your eyes? Is that what it is? Is it seen or do you have pain? You are 
They did not leave the house. Wow. Till my mother jumped out of the bed and ran all around the room speaking in tongues here. Come on, she had a hole in her heart and the blood was draining out of her body. Don't let the devil keep you staggered and sick and limited. Call upon him. Raise your hands. Raise your voice. Yeah. The Bible in the yeah. Hit the devil over the head with the Bible. Yeah. Stand on it. Jump on it. I sleep many times with my Bible if I don't feel good in my body. I sleep with it on my stomach or on my heart. Or with my feet propped upon it. Come on, you got to activate your faith. Man, we're going to get an answer here if I have to die trying. Hallelujah. <laughs> get with me. Come on. Do something foolish. Take some mud and rub it on their eyes and see what God will do. They're not going to let you spit on any mud today. In fact, if somebody falls out, they're afraid of being sued. We don't have people falling out anymore. We have very few people falling out in the spirit. You hear very few amens in the church. Very little clapping. We need to hear a sound from heaven that's in the church. Some of you need to get Give God be the glory. Be merry of it. Cross that Red Sea and take some others with you. She's the one that sang, the horse and rider are thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. We need a new song sung in the church about what God is doing. Are you listening to me? Just do it. Find that little pause in the spirit and do something. Occupy that space in the spirit. You've been thrown out anyway. Am I talking to the walls here this morning? Get your voice working. Get your tambourine working. Get your feet. Play something on that keyboard. Hallelujah. said the Philistines are dead. Here's what the Lord said to us. Listen, I was crippled when I went there. And this is what he said. Are you listening? You either out there on YouTube? He said, I'm going to bring a shift into Israel because you went. And that's exactly what happened. God removed some of the enemies. He changed the direction of the war. God is looking for us to do something about the times. Hallelujah. He's looking for a people. Read all, about all the great people in the Bible. The story of Esther. The story of Ruth. Leah. 
Jacob, listen to me. Jacob wanted Rachel. But Rachel wasn't according to the culture was not the first. He didn't want Leah. I want you to listen to why God did this. He wanted Rachel. She was beautiful. As soon as he saw her, he cried. And he thought he had her because he made an agreement with Laban, his father-in-law. But God didn't let Jacob have Rachel because she was too much like him. And there are things in our lives that God has to remove is too much like we are. It's too fleshly to have that that's spiritual. And Leah cried out. And Leah had more children by herself and her concubines than Rachel did. But Rachel had to die by the way. There's a monument there where she had to die by the way because she stole her father's birthright. Remember? Whoever had them at the very end died and killed them from the family. And the Bible says that when Jacob left, he thought, you know, he put everything out in front to protect him from his brother that was coming because he thought that Esau was still after him for himself and giving him his birthright. And he thought he was safe. He finally got Rachel, but she had to die on the way. And that thing that is like us has to be removed, that the presence and the spirit of the Lord can be made available, that can arise in us. You'll get this. It'll take a while for you to get it. But God's going to put many of you in dire circumstances, dry places, dry, so that he can start a fire. Yes, so that he can bring a move of his spirit. He's probably put you in a dry neighborhood. Oh, I got an amen. Put you in a dry neighborhood. Put you with some dry people. Anybody got unsafe neighbors in this room? Tell the truth. Come on, put your hands up. You got unsafe, unsafe neighbors? God wants to get them saved. Or either your flame is going to burn so bright, they're not going to bring out some of those things that they should bring. They're going to behave themselves. Are you listening? Yeah. I lived in a neighborhood where they partied every weekend. I thought, I got to move next door to these people's going to party every weekend. That's what I said to the Lord. I thought, Lord, I thought I'd lived this life one time. So God sends Judy Brown into this prayer room. Judy Brown is a counselor here. She's got a good prophetic word. She comes in to my prayer meeting one morning and she said, somebody in here, your neighbors are driving you crazy. I thought, oh, it's me. I put my hand up. It's me. I'm going to get delivered. They're going to move. You know what she said to me? They're not going to move and you're not going to move. God's going to leave you in that neighborhood until they get saved. Amen. We need to hear from God concerning our neighbors. People that are around us. Are you listening to me? Get them changed. Get them saved. Get them in church. Hallelujah. Let something about you be like a mystery to people that they come to seek and to find out who you are and what is it about you that's different. I have people ask me all the time, where are you from and who are you? Come on, you got to go in. To, they're frightened. Are you listening to me? There's a look about you. You have been like Jonah, honey. You've been in the belly of the whale. Come on. There's something about you that's different. When they saw Jonah coming and he said, Everybody, you better sacrifice or God's going to destroy this city in 40 days. And the king put out a proclamation that even the chickens had to fast. Come on. Yeah. The babies had the fast. The animals had the fast to save the city. We need that kind of a cry in America. Yeah. Are you listening to me? I'm preaching my heart to you. We need that kind of cry in America. So Judy gave me that word, Judy Brown. 
I thought, oh, I'm going to get to move out of my I could move none, honey. There wasn't a problem in moving. But I'm fearful of going ahead of the Lord. Yeah. Or it could be a Jonah experience. Yeah. Are you listening yeah. to me? Yeah. Oh, yes. He'll send you on a tour and put you right in the room with a roommate that you don't want. Am I talking to somebody? We want to choose our roommates because we don't want to be bothered by something that will disturb our rest and our peace. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, God said that in Hosea, there's a move that is coming that no big church nor little church has seen yet. Read it. It says, no big ship nor little boat with oars has been in. That's what the scripture says. Hasn't seen it. But you have to recognize it by the spirit of what God is doing. You've come here this morning. Jesus had 12 and one betrayed him. Out of 12, one betrayed him. If you read the book of Revelation, there are 14 sevens talks about the spirits, the stars, the angels, the candlesticks, the kings. There are 14 of them, 14 sevens. 54 times the sevens are mentioned in the book of Revelation. It says as soon as you start to read it, blessed is he that hears, reads, and keeps this book. I read it every day because it's a blessing on the book of Revelation. God is speaking to the church today. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We've got to see and hear what God is doing in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Every day we've got to hear something. What is God saying? Get you a journal. I've got a house full of journals of things God has spoken to me. And I had a friend of mine that says, I, I want your journals if you pass. I said, you seek the Lord for what you need to hear from him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. What is God saying? Yeah. Don't be like Paul on the road to Damascus. He had two, he had servants with him. Two of them with him. One saw the light and one heard the voice, but they didn't both see it all. You could be right in church next to somebody. It's got a prophetic word that's going to change the city. And we don't hear anything. God wants us to come and hear. Hear what the Spirit is speaking. That's why I encourage Richard to keep playing. Because there's a flow in the music. There's a flow. The tabernacle of David is Israel. Why? Because David was always singing about Israel. Why? Because Israel was the heart of God. Israel was the plan of God. All through the book of, of Genesis, through the book of Revelation, it's about Israel. And, and if you touch Israel, you touch the apple of God's eye. When we bring a mandate against Israel, we're bringing a mandate against God. When we say all these awful things in the news about Israel, we're speaking against God. And Israel is the heart of what God's doing in all the earth. It's his plan. In the book of Genesis, it started in a garden. In the book of Revelations, in the last chapter, it ends in a garden. It ends in Israel. Oh.
We're standing before God. There's a voice that's speaking from the judge's bench. I want a revolution. A revelation of righteousness. He said, Your righteousness will exalt a nation. It will exalt my people. It will exalt who I am. Trump is not your answer, folks. Come on, you better understand it. It's not who's in the White House, it's who's in our house. Does our house stand out as a tower, a watchtower, as an oasis, as an altar to the whole neighborhood?
Who else can you talk about? What else is there to talk about? It's not the latest movie. It's not the latest show. It's what God is doing in the heavens and he wants to bring it into the earth. Go ahead, brother. Blow that show fire. Go ahead and blow it. about to call to order. Can anybody understand? Can you say oh man? Don't be afraid to say amen. amen. We're not quite sure. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Yep. We're not quite sure about what God wants to do. Am I right or wrong? Right. Right. Nobody really knows. I've been waiting for somebody to, to say thus saith the Lord. Yeah. I don't hear that sound on a, very many voices. I listened for it. And I heard it on, on Mario Marilla's voice when he was here. I tell you, there was a sound from that place. It was a holy sound. But we're not quite sure. But it means court is in session. God's calling to the individual. He's calling into the church. And he's calling into the nation. We need some messages that when we come out of the church, we will feel like we've been in the courtrooms of heaven. Amen? We've heard from the righteous judge of what he wants. When the shofar sounded in the time of Samuel and of David, and of Moses, it meant it was a holy time, that there was something to be declared, something to be said. And we need prophecy in the church. I want to encourage all of you to stir up the gift that's inside of you. Stir it up. Amen. You all have a, oh, how many in here have the Holy Ghost? That means the spirit is inside of you. It wants to speak. It wants to declare the revelation. The whole book of Revelation, John is declaring what he saw. When he heard the voice behind him like a trumpet sounding. And he began to describe the Lord from the top of his head to the toes of his feet. He said, I heard the voice like a trumpet. And I turned to see, to hear. And when he saw, all he could see was the golden light. The brightness of who he is. Listen, the prophetic word is like an assignment to the church to turn it in a direction. To hear from heaven of what God is saying. It'll bring the church to an order, to a place that it's never been before. Because prophecy is the testimony of what God is saying to the church. And I was in a church that we had four and five prophecies every night. They were not generic, I'll tell you. They were assignments. They were direction. It was a clarion call. 
that was a sound like on the day of Pentecost that God was speaking to the church he said you wait until you hear the sound the church doesn't wait for prophecy today wait when we get through praising him and declaring him and adoring him I'm talking about adoring him you know what that means that means He's going to be so pleased. I've heard this twice in my life. When we got through praising the Lord, we got two prophecies in 20 years of being in this church. The Lord said, I am pleased with your worship. He doesn't often say that. I want to tell you. He said, I'm pleased with your worship. And because I'm pleased, this is what I'm going to do. Why? Because we let it be known who he was. We were just not singing some songs that everybody else was singing. We were declaring the greatness, the goodness, the worth of who he was. That's what he wants when we sing. Not just some songs that everybody's singing because they sound good. He wants us to be able to declare what God's doing in the earth by prophecy. So what does prophecy do? It brings the light like a laser. And it cuts through the darkness. And it removes all the boundaries and the hindrances that God can move in that church service. And he can bring light. And I was telling you about the five foolish. They didn't have any light because they didn't have any oil. Why? Because they couldn't pay the price for the oil. There's a price for the oil. They couldn't pay the price. Everything is given to you in salvation. But the gifts and the signs and the wonders and the miracles comes with the price. Revelation knowledge, dreams, visions. It comes with revelation knowledge of what God wants to do. And there's the scripture says, Oh, come and let us sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Every one of you has a voice. And God wants to fine tune that voice that it sounds like a river. And that river is going to come and water and wash where you live, where you sleep, your house, your church. An authority is going to come. From that river. The Bible tells us in Psalms 45 that there's a river from the throne of God to your heart. And it's going to declare the worth of the Lord. So, what am I saying? He's about to call three witnesses you, the church, and the nation into the courtroom of God and what he's doing. Is there something wrong with electricity? Something with the amplifier. Hallelujah. Three witnesses. The individual. That's you and me. What I'm saying to you, listen to me. You've got the Holy Ghost in you. That's why Jesus went back so he could send the comforter. He said, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. He's going to be with you to help you and guide you. Make you aware of the times. Let everything in you be supercharged. You got a super battery in you. Let it be supercharged. Wherever you go, it's going to blaze and shine with the light of God. Now listen, this light that's in you, that's addressing the witnesses, here's what it's saying. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth to help you God as long as you live? This is what the Lord said to me on the day that COVID hit this country. COVID 
God used, I don't care what anybody's saying, everybody's trying to say what COVID is. It turned the whole world upside down. God used it to get our attention. God made me aware of it when I was watching the Chinese with their mask on. This was about a week before it, we knew what was going on. And I remember looking at television to Chinese people in their mask. And I said these words out loud. Wouldn't it be horrible to have to wear a mask every day? I said that. Little did I know we'd be wearing them in a little while. Why? Because you speak out of your mouth all the time the heart of God and what's going on. So that you're not sitting out there wondering what in the world is going on. Because, listen, you're the light. The Bible says you're the light of the world. I've called you to be the light. What does light do? It gets rid of the darkness. It kills the darkness. It moves the darkness out of the way. Amen?